Welcome to the Evening News. I'm Professor Alessandria. I'm Jack. And I'm Simon. Tonight, we are going to tell you about... Drum roll, please. Kodak! Many of you might not know about Kodak. Today, we'll take you deeper into Kodak than ever before. Kodak was founded on September 4th, 1888 by George Eastman and Henry A. Strong. The Eastman Kodak Company was incorporated in 1901 as a successor business established in Rochester in 1880 by George Eastman. George Eastman perfected the newly developed method of taking pictures. Before then, pho photographers had to coat a plate with fresh wet chemicals each time they wanted to take a pho photograph. Imagine how hard that would be. Eastman developed a machine that mechanically produced dry pre-coated plates. Four years later, Eastman introduced roll film. Kodak was the first producer of home movie equipment in an easy-to-use color slide film, Kodachrome. Kodak began to struggle financially in the 1990s as a result of the decline in sales of photo photographic film and its slowness in transitioning to digital photography. As a part of a turnaround strategy, Kodak began to focus on digital photography and digital printing. What a turnaround that might be. And attempted to generate revenues f through aggressive patent legitimation. Japanese competitor Fujifilm entered the U.S. market via Fujifilm Photo Film USA with lower priced film and supplies. Kodak was first to produce their home of movie equipment in an easy to use color slide film, Kodachrome. By the early 21st century, Kodak was facing a product decline. Kodak filed for bankruptcy in January 2012 and announced soon after they would no longer manufacture digital cameras and other digital imaging products. For more information, go to Kodak.com. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>Hi, my name is Saksham. I'm reporting about Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was born in February 1818 in his grandmother's cabin. He was born as a slave. When Douglass was growing up, he became an American social reformer, just like Martin Luther King Jr. He was also an abolitionist, orator, writer, and a statesman. It's so amazing that he did so many jobs. He wrote seven autobiographies and was a firm believer in the equality in people. Most of his life, he lived with his grandmother because his mom died when Frederick was only 10 years old. Later on, he ran away from Maryland to escape slavery, and he was successful. When he died at the age of 77, he was buried in Mount Hope Cemetery. There's also an anniversary of Frederick Douglass every year on February 20th. That's the date he died. Thanks for watching. Hello, my name is Colby. I will be introducing the topic Sam Patch to you. Sam Patch was a born jumper. He was born in 1807 and he was a fifth child in Pawtucket, in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. There, he went to work at a cotton mill. He used his spare time to jump into the Pawtucket River from the mill roof, which was almost 100 feet above the water, which made him an, ex an excellent sw swimmer as well as an excellent jumper. Sam went to Patterson, New Jersey to work at a cotton mill that was set on a Pasaic Falls beside a ravine. Sam started his career as a natural jumper when he jumped into the highest cliff of Pasaic Falls, 70 feet. In August 1828, he made a 90-foot jump from the masthead of a sloop. He was a day late for an attraction on, on October 6th, 1829, but jumped 70 feet off the lower end of Goat Island the next day. On October 17th, he jumped 120 feet off of Niagara Falls. Hi, my name is Jack. And my name is Sam. Today we'll, 
we will be telling you about Sam Patch. Sam Patch, the Jersey Jumper, jumped off the high falls of the Genesee River. That's 96 feet high. Right. On Friday the 13th, he added a stand to high falls and then jumped off of that. Unfortunately, he died. Sam Patch was not only known as the Jersey Jumper. He was also known as the Daring Yankee and the Yankee Jumper. He was buried in Mount Hope Cemetery, Rochester, New York. I'm Simran and this is Samantha. Whoa, this place is cool. Yeah, it is, but back to business about the Underground Railroad. Okay, fine. That's the spirit. What was the Underground Railroad used for? The Underground Railroad was a term used to describe a secret network of meeting places, secret routes, passageways, and safe houses used by slaves in the U.S. to escape slaveholding states to Canada. Cool. When was it first used? The Underground Railroad was formed in the late 1700s, and it ran north to the free states in Canada and reached its height between 1850 and 1860. Okay. Who started the Underground Railroad for runaway slaves? Dun the Quakers are considered the first organized group to actively help to escape slaves. The Quakers are nice. I have one question for you. What are some known stations of the Underground Railroad in Rochester, New York? Let's see. There's the Henry Quinby Farm by Menden Ponds Park and the old Frederick Douglass home near Highland Park. I know one. The Warrant Farm in Brighton, now 1956 West Henrietta Road. Many Monroe County locations were used as safe houses to shelter slaves before they were placed on boats. That was a good idea. Now that I think of it, the Underground Railroad helped a lot of slaves. Yeah, it did. For more facts like this, Google Underground Railroad. Bye. Hi. Did you know that Rochester used to have a subway? Well, it did. I'm Sophia, reporting about the Rochester Abandoned Subway. The subway ran from 1927 to 1956. Two miles of the subway was covered by a cut and covered tunnel. The subway was constructed in the bed of the old Erie Canal. The line was operated on a contract basis by New York State Railways until Rochester Transit Corporation took over in 1938. The last day of passenger service was on June 30th. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a subway to catch. But for more information, you can Google the Rochester Abandoned Subway. Goodbye. Wow, I just learned the coolest facts about High Falls in Rochester, New York. High Falls is located right outside of Center City on the Genesee River. High Falls, you may think, is just a waterfall. But High Falls was used a long time ago to make flour. The power from High Falls turned stone mills which ground wheat into flour. The 80-foot High Falls used to be 96 feet tall, but the lower height reduces flooding. If you want to learn more about High Falls, you can go to the High Falls Museum. At the museum, you can learn about how Rochester went from a glacier to the city we know today. The museum is on a street called Browns Race, which used to be a waterway. Did you know that High Falls is a natural waterfall? If you did, you are right. Thanks for watching the Natural News. Music